I'm best way is on my cell phone that's listed in the directory. And then also in two weeks, we have our congregational meeting for the sole purpose of addressing those changes that we made and some additions that have been made to those changes from the Senate on our Constitution Bible. It has to be a month notice and out there, everybody, so please be willing to put on your camels or to be here on March 6th after worship. That's the only technical business we can address at that meeting. Um, we'll also try to share with you maybe some updates of what's going on around here, but please be part of that as well. Those are the things I may know about, but I do think you all would like to share as you gather this morning. Yeah, okay. Out of our first great grandchild from the 18th. Yay! Linda was sharing that they just had their first great grandchild. Is it a boy or a girl? Girl. Girl. Uh, girl. Congratulations! Woohoo! Awesome. Is this the story? Yes, ma'am. The worship board is going to tentatively meet after the worship on March 20th. Side of the Constitution. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not significantly different than what we voted on at the semi-annual meeting, but there were enough technical corrections that the Senate asked for. It's just easier to keep clean and to make sure we had our 30 day notice. With that, then I invite you to take just a few moments and prepare your hearts for worship. I would invite you to stand as you are able and to journey in the confession and forgiveness. Let us be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us and forms us, who redeems us and calls us, who unites us and sends us. Amen. Gathered in God's presence, let us confess our sins. Mighty and loving God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We seek our own way. We divide the body of Christ. In your mercy, cleanse us and heal us. Let the words of our mouths, the thoughts of our hearts, and everything that we do be filled with faith, hope, and love. Amen. Hear the voice of Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim release to the captives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I proclaim to you the entire forgiveness of your sins. You are released. The joy of the Lord is your strength, and the gift of the Holy Spirit yours forever. Amen. I'm going to invite those of you who are joining us here in first to have a seat. As I take some time for um, our kids who might be joining us online this morning. Just going to put this down for a second. So, hi there. How are you doing? I don't know if you're actually there, so I'm just going to talk. But isn't that how we greet somebody if we see them? We maybe wave at them and say, hi, good morning. I was out walking this morning, getting some things and opening the door. I saw somebody walking down the street. He had a dog with him, and I said, Hi, good morning. And he waved back at me. And I said, The dog looks like he's having a good time walking. Because he was. I was like, oh. <laughs> and I got me thinking about how we greet people. We may wave at them. Maybe if it's grandma or grandpa, you give them a hug. Maybe we shake their hand. You know what? I've been around in other countries and around people who maybe come from a different culture, they might say hello in a different way. Have you ever seen that? Like I've noticed in some countries, like 
they do is they slightly bow one another. And I would also say, do this. Lots of different ways. I was once in a country where they drove on the wrong side of the street. That was really confusing to me. I was so glad I was not riding a rental car because my mind just did not handle that. I also don't get people eat different food. I've smelled things that I don't know how they got those smells. Oh, really good. How about all the different ways things happen among people? Maybe you've seen some differences too. And they're all incredible. And sometimes they're hard to live with because they're so different. And I got me thinking about something Jesus is going to teach us today when we read our gospel text. He tells us to maybe live differently than we would think we should live as we're part of his followers. He says to love our enemies and pray for people we don't necessarily you know, much, and treat others like we would like to be treated. You know, sometimes that can be really hard to do because we want to hate those people that don't, we don't like. We want them to go away. So why it's kind of hard to be Christians sometimes. But we listen to Jesus and we know the Holy Spirit is working in us. And even when we can't do that, Jesus still loves us. And the Spirit is still going to work in us. And we know that with God, we can love him just a little bit more. So I love seeing differences, and it helps me grow. And I don't know, maybe I'll find a new way to say hello. I, I've seen people do that. Arm bump and a butt bump. And who knows how else we can say hello. I'm going to ask you to pray with me, though. Lord, thank you. Thank you for the differences that you create. Thank you for helping us love those people that we might not naturally love. Help us to pray for folks, no matter what. And thank you, Jesus, for loving us so much so that we can help and love others. We ask Jesus as you think it's good for us as we pray in your name. Amen. I'm going to invite all of us to sing together our opening song, and if you are able, please stand.
day we sing together, great is the Lord. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. 
Do not be provoked by the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger, leave rage alone, do not be provoked, it leads only to evil. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord shall possess the land. In a little while, the wicked shall be no more. Even if you search out their face, they will not be there. But the lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. But the deliverance of the righteous comes from you, O Lord. You are a stronghold in time of trouble. You, O Lord, will help them and rescue them. You will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them, because in you they seek refuge. Yes, sir, thank you. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. Well, these are the words for those gathered on that level place. Grow in their discomfort today. We read those, we hear those words, and we immediately think, Trying to find a way around them. When I googled examples of loving your enemies, just to see what would come up, because why not Google there? One of the articles that showed up was what Jesus really meant when he said, We call ourselves Christians, but when we read these words and compare them to how maybe we or others live, Say we're living out a Christian faith, it doesn't sound much like Jesus. And we're often searching for that workaround when it comes to these teachings. Now, to be fair, the article I read, the author did conclude by assuring the readers 
that it's all about God's mercy and grace. And perhaps that's good for us to keep in mind, too. We look around to our families, communities, and nations and think it's impossible to live as Jesus teaches. We're on the brink of yet another war overseas, and the rhetoric in our backyard is deafening and growing. Loved ones have grown silent. Can we even envision a time when it would be different? Our history, our full history, shows us that it can, and it has, and it may be. If you go back to World War II, you'll find the story of the Luftwaffe pilot from Cyprus. By the time the German fighter, he refused to shoot down a crippled American bomber flying over Germany. The 21-year-old American pilot was on his first mission, and his entire crew was either wounded or dead. And his plane was riddled with bullet holes. Sawyer said that he thought they were in trouble and thought that bringing down the plane would be tantamount to murder. So instead, he escorted them to safety and peeled off. Decades later, the two met in a well-publicized, friendly reunion. And then there's the account of the Japanese soldier who gave back a graduation ring to an American prisoner of war, who was a former football player. You see, he had studied in the U.S. and had seen this gentleman play. And so he gave him the ring back and said, you are a great player. Good luck. And walked away. So when I look at it, I've been all over the television these past three weeks. And then early on, I was watching one of the bobsledding events. Not bobsledding. Um, uh, snowboarding. Bobsledding just was happening. I was watching it yesterday for the bobsledding. But one of the snowboarding, first of all, I didn't know you could do all the various things on snowboard that they do in the Winter Olympics. I was like, how do you do that at Club Bones? But anyways, I was watching one of those events. And the first, all of the heats were pretty, you know, closely gathered. And there was one person who had been in the lead almost the entire time. She's an American. And was on the last run, last um, snowboarder to go down this course. And when she reached the bottom, she ended up winning. And the American, instead of kind of kicking the snow and walking away, started cheering for her. And when this woman got to gathering of it, both her teammates and the U.S. teammates grabbed each other and celebrated their wins together. And I'm sure you saw the same thing. You can come up with your own remembrances of when there was something different happening. We look at this morning's Genesis text. And it reminds us that even when people, including your family, do some really heinous things, like fighting if you kill, with God it's possible to live life differently. God makes it possible to do those, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who abuse you, as Jesus taught. We're caution. Notice that Jesus said, pray for those who Abuse you, not stay with those who abuse you. Important to remember. And when we hear these words of Jesus, we might agree with them and shake our heads and see that living that way would be a good way to do. The idea of loving people, as we see as unlovable, is kind of the thread that runs through our faith. We're taught that we think God is love. But the truth is that we have a hard time believing it and even a harder time acting on it. So was Jesus just being an impractical idealist? Some would say yes. After all, he's both human and divine, and so it already puts him in a whole different category than you and me. And the fact that he's sinless and we're not, His ideals are simply that, something to strive for but not actually achieve. Because the argument goes, then they wouldn't be ideals. 
By the way, I didn't. By the way, I argued that about miracles when I was in philosophy. Didn't work. What Jesus teaches, the argument goes, that it's not possible in this world. And oh, by the way, his ideal ended up getting him crucified. But as theologian Reinhold Niebuhr might say, perhaps we need the idealists of the world to pry the rest of us so that we can accomplish something more than what we otherwise would, that thing that would be just beyond our grasp. With that idealist we pushing us beyond our comfort zones, we settle for far less than what's possible. The inconvenient truth is that we can actually love people we perceive as our enemies. And Jesus tells us to do that one action at a time, to not try and do it all all at once. We can love our enemies one kindness at a time. So I learned Dr. Martin Luther King said in a sermon in Montgomery, Alabama, that far from being an impractical idealist, Jesus has become the practical realist. The words of this text glitter in our eyes with a new urgency. Far from being the pious injunction of a utopian dreamer, this man is an absolute necessity for survival of our civilization. Yes, it is love that will save our world and our civilization. Love for even our enemies. Jesus. Impractical idealists? Not really. He knew how the world worked. He wasn't naive. But he knew that as his disciples followed his teaching, lived out their faith, that through their actions, the world and them would, they would be changed. That the kingdom would come on earth just as it is in heaven. And that peace, knowledge, and understanding then became possible. And mercy and grace would overflow. Okay, you might be thinking, I can get on board with that love your enemies part of a little bit. I can probably even choke out a prayer or two for them. But I'm not going to like it. Or them. Well, okay. Because the love that Jesus talked about is not about making everybody your BFF and asking them to move into your spare room so you can be together 24 7. It's what the Greeks call agape. And it's that universal, unconditional love that transcends and persists regardless of circumstances. It's the love that God has for us. It's the love Jesus showed as he hung on the cross. It's a love that bursts forth from a stone-covered tomb and free prisoners' chains. For us humans, it's elusive to say the least. But through the Holy Spirit, it is possible. Let me share with you where I've been struggling with this teaching of Jesus lately. It's happened in the last few months, and it has nothing to do with the political stuff going on. It's happening in the church, the ELC specifically, to a colleague, a friend, and how a bishop I admired suddenly felt like an enemy. How can you love the victim, the perpetrator, and what I call an acquiescer, all at the same time because you know what the core of your being they are all children of God, redeemed, called, and loved. It started when I received an email from the board of directors of a ministry where my friend is pastor. I'm a donor to the program, so I'm on their mailing list. You know how that goes. It was a letter sent to everyone to inform them in very eloquent words that the board had just fired her. As I read this missive, my mind reeled. The ministry was thriving and growing, and my friend had just spearheaded a very successful fundraiser, like in the neighborhood of $60,000. And after all, she was under letter of call, which should have meant that they couldn't just 
inspire her without going through the necessary steps she would send to that letter. Did the bishop know this was happening? Surely he would step up, set things straight, and the situation would be made right. None of that happened. And the pastor recently resigned from the BLCA Ross. So no. I continue to support my friend and pray for her and the ministry she was ripped out. And yes, I pray for the bishop as well. From serving on the city council for numerous years, I know the hard decisions that are sometimes having to be made where there is no win-win situation. Am I so angry with him? Yes. Do I trust that I could have an in-person conversation with him? Don't know. What I can do out of love it's right, but also to work to the best of my ability to make sure situations like this don't happen again so that no other pastor, no other faith community, or even bishop is caught in this all parties lose vortex. Grounded in God's love and empowered by the Holy Spirit, we can work together to at least change our little sliver this world. And so I can use Jesus' words this morning. Knowing that it is only by the grace and the mercy of God and the Holy Spirit at work in us that I, that we, can love our enemies. And so we do. I offer you that same word as you examine the parts of this text and those people in situations in your life where it just feels like this is rather than raw. With the Spirit's help, perhaps you too can say in the words of Martin Luther King Jr., I've decided to stick with love. Hatred is too great a burden to bear. Please pray with me. Merciful God, we are so often reminded that the ways of your kingdom are not always the ways of the world. We hurt each other. We manipulate each other. We don't love as you would have us love. Through Jesus, we are given a clearer vision of your reign and how we want it to be so, O oh God. Help us to experience your transforming work going on in and through us. Show us how to lean on your holy power as we walk our earthly days in faith. We ask all things, so God is in accord with your will. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs>
Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, and so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all according to their needs. Gracious God, you teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike. Encourage your church to follow the leading of your love, especially when it is risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy, just as we have received mercy. God of grace, creating God, nurture fields that lie dormant, resting until it's time to bloom again. Bless all who cultivate fields. Give favorable weather for planting. Bring forth from buried seed an abundant harvest. And guard against famine and disease. God of grace. God of wisdom. Look upon our world with mercy. That we delight in an abundance of peace. Protect all whose lives are marred by war or civil unrest. Release political prisoners and amplify the voices of challenge that challenge us to seek forgiveness. God of grace. Yeah. Healing Lord, your people cry out for mercy. Console hearts that long for forgiveness. Mend broken relationships. Heal bodies that suffer chronic pain or illness. Strengthen and deliver all whose spirits are troubled. As we gather this day, we lift in prayer the family and friends of Norm Helbush, the family and friends of Isaac Dinsmore. We pray for Mike, Sherry, Vicki, Logan, and Emily, Tyson, and all who are on our hearts. God of grace. Yeah. Gathering, Lord, you bind us together into one family. Teach us to forgive one another and to resolve conflicts with humility and patience. Bless families of all kinds and show love to those who are lonely and grieving. God of grace. Yeah. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I would invite you to share a sign of peace. <laughs>
please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It was in the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The things of God for the gathered people of God. Come, taste, see them, our Lord is good. But congregation to be seated. Would ask you once again to stay to come to our community area through the center aisle. I will serve you the bread. And then please take up a cup with either wine or grape juice, whichever you are most comfortable with. And then keep those cups with you and place them in the containers on the far end of the pews as you turn by the side aisles. Everything is gluten-free for those for whom that is an issue. This is indeed Christ's table, and all are invited.
I do the same as you were able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring to you and keep you in his words. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send to us the news and proclaim your favor to all, strengthened by the richness of your grace in your Son. Jesus Christ. Amen. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in, today and forever. Amen. We close the singing together this day. We are marching in the light.